I'm joined now by Dr. Kate Talenko. She's the founder and CEO of Corvus Health. Dr. Talenko, there are reports the new subvariant of Omicron is behind this surge in China. And what we're seeing there in Jilin province in Hong Kong, is there any sign that the surges in these areas are easing or are we still going to see an upward trajectory? So most likely it is the BA2 um, version of the Omicron virus, which is causing these surges, and it's more infectious uh, than the regular Omicron virus, which, as we know, is more infectious than Delta or the, the standard first variant. And, and it was interesting to hear your reporters note that, you know, they've now had to use two different types of interventions, the rapid testing and also the office lockdowns, because when you encounter a more infectious version of the virus than you had in the past, you have to up your level of protection. Now, China has been very effective in the past with the zero COVID policy, but now that you have this more infectious version of the Omicron, they are going to have to institute more, more stringent measures, and I do expect to see infections rise. And do, can we see more vaccinations? It seems like there is some hesitancy with some senior citizens to get vaccinated. Um, so I want to ask you about that. And then also the other challenges that the mainland is seeing right now. Well, certainly, and we can also talk about Hong Kong as well. So uh, uh, mainland China has vaccinated about 90% uh, of its residents, but there are a lot of seniors who haven't gotten it either because uh, they weren't interested or, or wasn't available. And I think that China does need to prioritize those seniors now to get vaccinated because especially if they're living in a more congregate uh, facility, you know, nursing homes or, or elder hostels, they'll be much more likely to spread it in that type of environment. So that has to be the priority. And then we have Hong Kong, which, as we know, has the highest case fatality rate of, for COVID that's been seen anywhere in the world. And it's because uh, Omicron has hit their, their nursing homes and their elder hostels. And what happened in, in, in Hong Kong is a bit different. You know, Hong Kong had been successful with its zero COVID policy. But unfortunately, the press there really had overreported you know, risks of complications or, you know, anytime a senior might die after receiving a vaccine, we know that seniors have very high mortality rates to begin with and that it frightened people. And the, the, the reports weren't put in a context of, of risk so that they could understand the risk of dying from COVID was greater than the risk of complications. And because of that type of reporting, seniors became very afraid of the vaccines and declined them. And so now Hong Kong is trying to make up for lost time, trying to get the seniors to accept the vaccine. And in the meantime, you know, we've all seen those horrific photos of, you know, bodies and body bags just um, lying on the floor alongside seniors in, uh, in hospital beds because the morgues in Hong Kong have been overwhelmed. And is there an, also an issue with not having enough immunity uh, there where we see other countries, especially in the West here in the U.S., where many, many millions of people have had COVID before and Omicron? I mean, what kind of impact does that have as well when we saw that China really didn't have hardly any cases of COVID for a very long time? So this is in a way is the downside of a zero COVID policy in that, you know, if, if you haven't been vaccinated, you don't have any immunity against it because there really hasn't been widespread COVID in, in China. So I think that that is indeed what's happening. Uh, so, you know, China really does have to step up those, uh, those vaccinations. What lessons do you think uh, the government has learned in the last few years? Because we just saw a very effective bubble around the Beijing Winter Olympics just uh, a month or so ago. What's worked and what hasn't worked? I would say in general, the, the zero COVID strategy has been uh, successful. I mean, it does have its, its disadvantages. Um, and it has, in some sense, you know, blunted economic growth, but also when you have huge surges of COVID, that blunts economic growth as well. You know, so, you know, I think the lesson learned for China is in that in their type of environment, they can do these major lockdowns, they can do the, the mass testing, but they really have to redouble their efforts to vaccinate people. All right, Dr. Kate Talenko, thank you so much for joining us from Virginia. Thank you.